Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Games to Come video, we're going to be discussing Ryzen again. Despite the fact the processor has formally launched, I'm still getting an awful lot of messages on Facebook, 20 or 30 a day, asking my opinions about it. And also, more news has popped up concerning Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3. So we're going to be talking more about my opinions of the chip, because quite a few of you have asked me for clarifications on my yesterday video. That made no sense, but I'm rolling with it at this point. But first of all, let's talk about the release date stuff for Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3. I don't think I need to go through this, but Ryzen 7, of course, all of the chips, all three SKUs, that's the 1700, 1700X, and finally the 1800X are all, are all 8 cores, 16 threads. Ryzen 5 is a bit more divisive, so there are going to be a couple of confirmed chips in the Ryzen 5 lineup, the first being the Ryzen 5 8, uh, 1600X, excuse me, and finally the R5 1500X, the first of which is the 6 Zen cores, 12 threads, while the latter is 4 cores, 8 threads. So in other words, you've got an additional 2 cores uh, with the... 1600x and it also features exactly the same clock speed as well as the 1800x and it's going to be sub 300 us dollars in fact amd have confirmed that uh, this is jim anderson of amd has confirmed that the rise of fire family is going to sit between 199 and 299 us dollars which is absolutely phenomenal now, considering that this is going to go against, let's say, a 6800K, which is about 420, 430, depending on your region, depending on how much the retailer wants to gouge you, US dollars, that's a significant chunk of change left in your wallet, which is really good. And on top of that, considering that the X99 platform is more expensive than, let's say, a lower-end X370 board. Sorry, frog in my throat. That makes it even better. So you're looking at about half the cost in terms of the same number of cores and same number of threads compared to an Intel processor, which is really impressive. The 1500X, meanwhile, is directly below the 1600X. At least we assume not all of the models have been released yet, although we kind of had a couple of leaks regarding that, as you know. And it is essentially a 1700X but minus four cores and minus eight threads. It is slightly lower clock speed, but it looks like a lot of Ryzen's can still clock to about the same speed anyway, so that may not be a big deal. Honestly, I'm personally thinking that the six core 12 threads could be the best value proposition out of the entire lineup, unless you're on a really like kind of stingy budget and I don't mean that in a harsh way but if you're on like a really low budget and you just want a processor that's purely for gaming and maybe you want to throw more money into a GPU instead then possibly one of the four core eight thread derivatives is the better buy. With that said we do know that these processors are going to be released between April and June which is yes a bit of a window and yes it's kind of a long time to wait if you are looking to upgrade now like if you've got I know a processor like a you know, 2500K, and it's a bit long in the tooth. And I don't mean the 2500K is a bad CPU, but, you know, if the hardware's a bit old, maybe something's going wrong, maybe your memory's kind of getting a bit creaky, and sometimes you get the odd BSOD, and it's just, you just want to jump platform, then that can kind of suck. Ryzen 3, on the other hand, is not going to be released until the second half of 2017. That, to me, is a real shame. It is going to be sub $200, and that's going to put Intel in a very difficult position with the i3s. But it's really a shame that we're going to have to wait so long for it. Now, do bear in mind that these particular processors are going to range from, from what we understand anyway, because AMD have yet to confirm all of the details, but it's going to range from a four-core chip with, hyper, with SMT, excuse me, I was about to say hyper-threading, down to no... Uh, SMT at all, but possibly just four cores and lower clock speeds. Obviously, that means you're going to have much lower um, performance levels in multi-threading tests, but that might be the better value proposition, depending on what you're using it for. For example, a media machine, a basic gaming machine, all of those could certainly be absolutely fine with a chip such as that. So, I did 
also promised you all I would give some opinions and further clarification as to my gaming uh, review yesterday. Well, I was going through some benchmarks and bits and bobs from various websites regarding Ryzen. Now, I want to put a massive asterisk that's the size of a neon sign just for a moment and say that our own Ryzen CPU has arrived. We also have it with the motherboard as well. I'm going to start start doing benchmarking tomorrow. I've had to do a lot of photography. Amy is currently away. She's got a thing with her sister because it's her sister's birthday. So they've kind of, you know, booked a holiday and stuff. So I'm having to handle everything this week, which is just unfortunate timing. It's not like it's her fault. So basically, I've managed to do all the, photo the photography for the motherboard, the CPU, <laughs> the case that we were sent, the memory, the GPU, the cooler and a few other bits and pieces all of the video and that was taking me pretty much all day because lighting is a bitch to set up by yourself incidentally but anyway that's all done um, and i've got some really nice shots i must admit i'm not as good with, as amy with the camera but i kind of had to learn on the fly so i think i did pretty well and i've also done a lot more research on ryzen so that is going to be over the next couple of days and i'm going to put out a lot of benchmarks we're going to be testing it with gtx 1080 which is a loner but still that's absolutely fine you know not like that affects the performance and so we can definitely start doing a lot of benchmarking however i have still been going through a lot of performance reports with ryzen now there are a couple of things which immediately strike me first of all i do believe that the performance of ryzen is going to improve with bios updates I personally believe that, and I don't know if it's the CPU's fault or whether it's the motherboard vendor's fault or a combination of both. I'm probably going to find out more about that over the next few weeks, I imagine. But I believe that the chips or the BIOSes weren't quite cooked enough. And I believe that BIOS ups updates will subsequently improve the performance of the chips in certain tasks. I can't promise this, but just from what I'm reading... From what people have told me in the industry and from what I've, discussions I've had with AMD, it looks like that's possibly going to be the case. The second point I'd like to uh, bring to your attention is that I have bought this a kit myself. In other words, this is not review sample stuff, and that's one of the reasons for the delay. I know I've said this a couple of times, but some of you have been messaging me asking why I wasn't the first day with Ryzen. Well, first of all, we didn't get a review sample, which is a shame. I could have gotten one, but it would have taken longer. And I didn't want to wait, make you guys wait. Now, ironically, I kind of had to because um, we were supposed to get it day one, but there was a screw up with the order. We weren't sent out the um, stock, despite the fact that we pre-ordered on day one. Amazon promised us we would get it up until the day of launch. And then we just didn't get the delivery. So I, quite late, to be honest with you, on um, that morning, I was basically Googling around, managed to find a chip and the motherboard, pray to the gods, and it has been delivered. So I received it this morning. So that's why basically there's been this delay with the uh, review. And the third thing is that, you know, to be honest with you, I believe that the performance of Ryzen in gaming benchmarks isn't quite up to the levels of like the 7700k but with that said it also depends on what you're expecting for example if you are running a game with a gtx 1080 and you are let's say for the sake of argument running at 1080p my question is why <laughs> like why are you doing that now, that's not to say that I don't expect the performance of Ryzen to be very impressive. I'm just saying that, obviously, in those situations, you're going to really start noticing frame rate issues, you know. And that is kind of the point of running it with a GTX 1080 at 1080p. You're essentially trying to show off CPU limitations, which, obviously, clock speed is going to play a part in that. And we kind of knew that going in. Like, I, I said in yesterday's video, and I mean it thoroughly, that if you have a 6700K right now, or a processor that is about on par, so let's say a highly clocked 4790, let's say you've got you know, a 7600K, something along those lines, unless you really need to buy a second system, I personally would not buy Ryzen yet. With that said, you know, buy a GTX 1080 Ti, buy a Vega when it's launched. I'm not saying don't buy the Ryzen. I personally believe that if you have an older processor, you're looking for an upgrade, Ryzen is the better value proposition. 
if you do more than game. On the other hand, if you do only gaming, it becomes a bit trickier. Arguably, in the next year or two, it's going to be different because like games are going to become increasingly multi-threaded. Now, I will be doing an awful lot of testing. One of the things I want to do is enable and disable certain processor cores on Ryzen so we can start doing some simulations. By simulations, I, of course, mean, okay, well, let's try to make a bastardized version of the 1600X and figure out, okay, how well does that perform? Now, obviously, I'm running a 1700X, so there's not really that much of a difference between them other than two cores because the cache level is the same. So assuming that I get the processor running at the same clock speed, there's no issues at all, theoretically. And I also want to see what BIOS updates do. And I have been told a few things as well by AMD to improve the performance of Ryzen. I think, to be honest, some of this stuff is bugged. Um, like, for example, under power saving, you're supposed to put the Windows 10 onto extreme performance uh, under the power settings. And there are a few other bits and pieces, too, that I'll start covering in the review. What does all of this mean? Well, it's basically what I said on day one, like actually way before day one. I knew the launch was not going to be 100% smooth because honestly, no launch ever has been. KB Lake had problems as well. I think I told you guys that we were sent a KB Lake motherboard to review. It's one of the reasons a while back I said that we were reviewing KB Lake, but we didn't because basically the motherboard we were sent was fucked um, and the dual channel memory just wasn't working. So basically we had to send it back and then at that point Ryzen was coming and it just wasn't worth us basically pursuing it with all the other stuff that we had at the time. Um, but even so, like we were giving reviewers guides and in the reviewers guides it clearly said if you have a BIOS which is old, which is older than this, update to the latest BIOS because the older BIOS has issues. Basically, it was pumping way too much voltage into the processor. One of the reasons it was doing that was to get stable overclocks. The problem with that, of course, is it puts power consumption up through the roof for A and for B. What happens if you run loads of voltages through a processor? Ding, ding, ding. That's right. You start making lots of heat. And that's one of the reasons there were a lot of reports that the 7700K, for example, was running at like, you know, the temperature, temperature, excuse me, of the surface of the sun compared to the 6700K. And it kind of put the 7700K in a bad light. Honestly, I don't think the 7700K is that great compared to a 6700K. And I don't mean that 6700K is better before anyone takes that out of context. I'm just simply saying that if you had a 6700K, then you wouldn't really be that compelled to jump onto the 7700K unless, for example, you needed the motherboard's particular feature set, in which case, maybe, but it's still a side grade at the absolute best. So that's kind of the thing. Like, I think Ryzen has a lot of potential. I genuinely believe that this is one of the best products AMD have launched in a long time. But guess what? It's not going to be for everyone. I know people who only game on their PC. They do absolutely nothing else. And with a conscience, I can't tell them if they've got a choice between upgrading, for example, a 4790K with, let's say, they have, I don't know, a GTX 780. Like, the not a tie, just a GTX 780. And they have a 4790. That's not an inconceivable system configuration. And they say, well, should I buy a Ryzen 7 1700? and the requisite motherboard, or should I put that money into a GPU, and let's say a GTX 1080 or a GTX 1070 or whatever. I can't really tell them that the CPU is the better purchase, because as we all know, in those situations, well, it's not. That's just kind of how it is. But that's nothing new. That's like me telling you, well, water, if you're holding electricity, it's not going to go too well for you. It's, 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 it's just... It's just not. You just don't want to do it. Um, but yeah, so my opinion so far with Ryzen, I'm happy with it. Just to be totally honest with you all, I probably would not have bought Ryzen if I had the Skylake system I had now and I was not doing RGT. I probably would have waited for a couple of months and maybe done a side grade for myself if I had the cash spare. However, I'm not doing that. I bought Ryzen specifically to cover for you all. And as I said this on Facebook, um, on Facebook, uh, Red Gaming Tech Facebook, it's like I've been covering Ryzen all this time, so it seemed only fair for me to, you know, splatter for us, 
not just me, by the way, for us to splash out, buy Ryzen, and then cover it for you all. So it's like I personally have a vested interest in this because uh, Amy's machines get a little bit old. So at her house, I'm going to leave the uh, the Skylake machine and I'm going to be using the Ryzen machine, which is going to be even better for me because, once again, I do a lot of VM work. I run multiple applications at once. And if anyone's seen my computer um, with web browsers open, about two billion different applications open, plus as well probably alt-tabbing between gaming, you can probably understand why those additional threads are probably going to be a good thing for me. But with all of that said, I think I've waxed it lyrically enough. Tomorrow I shall have system built, assuming something doesn't explode, and I'll probably put together a video on that, assuming there's nothing that's goes terribly wrong for me. Um, as I said, all the photography is done, and I think it's going to be fun. Like, I think I think you all are going to like it. Oh, and one last thing. One more thing. So, I have also been asked a couple of questions on the cooling situation and the brackets. And I can only speak from my experience with UK retailers. I can't ex speak with the experience of, like, the States or whatever. Generally speaking, you have to be a bit careful because some unscrupulous retailers will say that the cooler is AM4 compatible or does support AM4, but in smaller print or with an asterisk, it will say you need to then contact X manufacturer for them to give you a bracket. Now, we bought from Overclockers UK for the cooler, and that's not me advertising Overclockers UK, I'm just being honest, and we bought a Cooler Master Liquid Master, I think it was called, um, I've got so many bloody names going through my head at the moment, so it could be wrong. And it was one of the few they had in stock on that day, and it had on there, it was AM4 compatible. We contacted Overclockers, and within a few minutes, they responded back, and they did confirm that their coolers do have the bracket um, attachment. And my heart started beating really fast when I got it, even though it did have a little sticker on the box that said AM4 compatible, and they had it. So it does appear that if you're in doubt at all, do double check with the retailer before you purchase the cooler, or you might end up with the system minus the cooler, well, uh, minus the clip. And obviously, without a clip, you can't uh, fix the cooler. And just so we're absolutely abundantly clear, the AM3, uh, the AM3 uh, clip is totally different from the AM4 clip. So unless you're a dab hand at masking tape, uh, don't do that by the way do not try to adhere your cooler with masking tape seriously um yeah just don't do it then you're basically screwed so you need to make sure you've got that clip or you're gonna have to basically send off for it and i'm just warning you that because i have had a couple of people messaging me already asking me about the clip situation so i'm just telling you Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. As I said, really sorry that things are a bit delayed. It just kind of is what it is. We're at this stage on the channel where we get a lot of stuff, uh, you know, sent to us. Like, as I said, Betfinex have sent us the case for, uh, for review for, uh, for the um, Ryzen build, which is phenomenal. Uh, Crucial have sent us loads of stuff as well. They've sent us memory, and they're going to be sending us more memory kits. And a couple of other manufacturers have sent us some other bits. Unfortunately, we're just not at the stage where we get like first launches on CPU. So sometimes stuff is like this is going to happen. But do thank you all for the support and the, you know, well, the views and stuff really. Because without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this pretty much. So yeah. Anyway, I'm going to run off because I have this to export. Uh, well, edit, export. And then I have got to go back to the grindstone and basically start building the uh, rig. And that's going to be a lot of work. So take care of yourselves. Bye for now.